Hey guys, welcome back. And today we're going to talk about USB power delivery, USB-C power delivery. And USB-C power delivery is very important because now more and more laptops are being charged, like this laptop here is being charged, the phone's charged on power delivery. Everything's being charged with USB power delivery. The new iPhones, to be charged at 30 watts, um, are on USB and it says it's called quick charging. And quick charging, aka if you're using USB-C, quick charging is going to be USB PD. So with USB power delivery, it's not about the connector, although it is in a way, because if it doesn't have this USB-C connector, there's tons of connectors out there, but it's got to have this one. It, if it has this one, it can be power delivery. So if it doesn't have this right here, it's not going to be USB-C power delivery. And power delivery basically allows you to charge above 5 volts. So Power is equal to volts times amps. Power. Since power is equal to volts times amps, increasing your current can only you can only increase your current so far before your wires start getting hot and everything. So the best thing you can do is double your voltage or triple your voltage. Power is very important if you want to get your phone charged faster. It used to be only charge USB on 5 volts. That's the standard USB. But now let's look at something. When I plug my phone in, it goes up to 8.7. It's really 9 volts is the standard, or typical standard. 9 volts, 12 volts, 15, and 20. So how are we getting 8 or 9 volts out of a USB connector? Well, that's a very good question. And it's actually not about the it's not about this connector, although this connector has something to do with it, but it's about the protocol that allows you to go up to 20 volts on the charger. And there's actually communication between the phone and the phone and then the the um, power device is charging it so let's dig into that so that we can understand it better so that when we're buying devices chargers and things we understand what they're actually selling to us so that some chargers not all chargers that, that are like this are going to offer the same thing and so we really need to understand what they're offering when they when we're buying something let's talk about what actually happens when you plug your phone or your computer or whatever device you're charging so, you've got your connector, it's a USB-C connector. We talked about this a little bit before. Um, not all USB-C connectors utilize all these pins, but um, in order to do USB-C power delivery and actually charge um, above five volts at a time, you need the CC line. So CC, CC1, and then CC2. And so if you flip this uh, connector, 180, this CC1 will now be down here, and this CC2 will be up here. So this connector is perfectly flippable and by having duplicate pins, um, no magic involved, you can basically use this either way and the connector will still end up being um, the same. Now there's some stuff that happens on the device ends to make this work well. So let's jump in now that you know what the connector is looking like and what the CC lines do. Um, let's actually look at how they like communicate. All Boat Circuits has a nice article and it talks about how if you plug in your device, um, there's a pull up on the what they call the DFP, and the DFP is it called downstream facing port, and that's basically just your charger, and then the upstream facing port is your, your phone or whatever wants to be charged. And so the downstream facing port has these RPs, and the RP is like a resistor, it's a pull up resistor, and it pulls the CC line up to a higher voltage, okay, so that's easy to understand, like higher voltage pulls it up. Now what happens is when you plug in your phone, your phone detects, okay, the CC line is pulled up, and then your phone has these pull downs and the resistor is tied to ground and so it pulls the voltage down. Um, when it does that, based on what it pulls down, you can set the different current capabilities. And based on that, the phone is supposed to basically decide how much current they can pull so that it doesn't wipe out your charger or whatever. And so that's kind of the uh, agreed upon um, way to do that. And it says right here, 0.9 volts can provide one. If, it's at, if the CC line is pulled down at about 0.92, then it can provide about 1.5 amps. If it's if it's pulled down to about 0.168, then you can get obviously three amps. So that's a little little write up, and then you can pick your resistors based on that to get, you know, on, on your your adapter. You can basically pick your pull up resistors so that this the standard pull down resistors will tell it what what you know. It basically knows how much current the phone can pull because you don't want your phone to wipe out uh, a USB port just because it pulls more, um, it draws more current than it's capable of. So that's pretty simple. So in order to get actual 9 volts, 12 volts, 16, whatever you're trying to get, 
Um, 16 is not a number, 15. But if you're trying to get voltage out of the chip, out of USB-C, your USB-C charger needs to get this communication. And right here, I've got this chip. It's called the it's a USB PD fast charging um, controller chip. Basically, by this is the chip, and this is there's different pinouts. But I have the CH224K, um, and this I'll show you on the breakup board here. But it, basically, this chip will allow me to select different. Um, Voltages and it'll, the standard voltages of 9, 12, 15, um, and 20. So, this chip basically allows me to do all the communication without me to do any work. But I want to see what this data actually looks like and can it read the data. So, what I have here is my logic analyzer. And my logic analyzer, my logic analyzer should be able to read the data coming on the CC line. So, there's my little, the little chip we showed you, CH225. And we're gonna plug this in first to show you what we're talking about. So we plug this in, and they call it like a decoy chip because it forces this adapter that's connected up to here to put out nine volts. And then I can flip the switches to get like 15 or 12, depending on the, the dip settings. So I'm gonna turn it back down to nine, and you can see I've got this too, it shows me what it is. And so then I have that connected. And I'm going to flip these switches once I have this, this analyzer connected to it to actually read the data out. Um, so we're going to have the ground. It's white. So I'm just going to tie it right to ground. Right here. Uh, and then I'm going to tie this one to here. So now theoretically, I've got everything connected. And so I should be able to read the data. So I've got the logic analyzer all connected up on my computer. And we will turn it on. But you see I'm getting these little pulses. Other than that, I don't see anything yet. And then I'm gonna flip the switch back and forth. And I'm stop it. Now we obviously don't really want to look at those little pulses. Yeah, so I'm just kind of looking at the data here and it's not meaning a whole lot. So we might have to put the oscilloscope on here and actually look at the voltages. Okay, so the logic analyzer Basically, it cartoons the data. So if you look, if you zoom in on something, they'll say, we think this is a square wave pulse, okay? And this is, it's 62 nanoseconds wide. Well, that's cartoon version. If you actually look at it voltage-wise, the voltage might look like this a little bit, but it won't be as clean, it'll be some fuzzy, there'll be some noises and stuff. So the oscilloscope will actually pick up everything and read it out, and it won't look, it's more, sorry to read, obviously, and that's why I usually use the uh, logic analyzer. But let's figure out why. Um, not getting any data on here, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so the logic analyzer isn't picking up the data that's being sent on the CC line. And since the whole purpose of this is to read the data and analyze it and know what's going on between your power supply, or if you want to call it charger, and the device, phone, or laptop. So since I can't read it, I'm going to put the oscilloscope on it. So what I have here is I have the oscilloscope tied to one of the CC lines, not both, so I only will be able to measure one of them but only one of them is used at a time. And I have a ground and everything's connected. And then when I click the on one of those dip switches, the voltage will change. So it's, it's gonna request nine volts or it's gonna request 12 volts or whatever. Um, so all I really knew is you need to do is, you know, move the switch and then see the data. So let's see if we can get some data and then find out why our analyzer, logic analyzer is not picking up the data. And then from there, once you get that figured out, we'll be able to read and analyze the data um, and obviously oscilloscope will just show you the voltages. It doesn't really analyze the data for you and it's not very clean and, 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 and um, harder to, it's harder to read. So really want to have an easy way to see what's happening. In order to capture the data, we have what's called a trigger. And if you set the trigger, when the voltage goes above that, it'll start recording all the data on the oscilloscope. And so let's do that. Okay, so we got the data and I think I can see why our digital logic analyzer is not picking up um, the data. and. We'll explain that real quick, but you can see there's zero volts uh, at the bottom and then the data um, at the, the top line, it goes up to like 1.2 volts. Uh, and I see that. So I think if we jump over to um, logic levels, so for CMOS logic levels, okay, what are logic levels? So a logic level is basically what is considered a one or a zero. So you got these ones and zeros being passed between your charger, phone, or device. The device and the charger are negotiating back and forth on the CC line. And we want to be able to read the data, okay? And 
our logic analyzer should be able to clean the data up and, and make it easy to see and read and interpret. But the logic analyzers, what the logic analyzer thinks is a, a one is like down here, two volts um, for a, for five and then for for like a consider a high. And so if you need two or 2.4 volts roughly to make a, a considered a high, but on ours, you could see it was a one point, let's go back there. Okay, so you can see in here the voltage is, it goes up to 1.2 volts. So it never goes above 2.5 volts. So you can see why the logic analyzer is not picking it up because the logic analyzer is looking for like a 3.3 logic or a five volt logic level um, system. And this is only one to like 1.2 at the max volts. So we need to figure out a way to make this go higher. And I think we've got it, it's a circuit. All right, so you can see this data um, and it's obviously terrible as far as uh, how it looks. But the thing is, I the sampling frequency wasn't really high on this, so there aren't a lot of sampling points. So it looks very jagged and, and this is not exactly how it would look if, um, if I was sampling better. But nonetheless, the green is the output of my op amp and the op amp that I'm using, this is the op amp I'm using and this gain bandwidth is 190 kilohertz, which our signal is 300 kilohertz. Um, and then also your slew rate is 0.08. So based on the those numbers and also the signals I'm getting, this op amp just is not gonna be fast enough to use as a comparator. Um, it's, made, it's made for an op amp, made for lower frequencies and such. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a comparator and I'm gonna try again. I'd like to make this into a two part video because I was really seeing that a little breakout board that I could connect up my digital analyzer to at some point and, and basically be able to measure any data coming through from a phone, uh, any smartphone or any USB-C communication whatsoever. It would be nice to have it all on one board with a comparator. And um, so we're just gonna do that. But for now, all I wanna do is focus on, okay, we saw the data, we, we understand how the CC line works. We understand how the USB-C connector plays into USB-C PD and that it's the CC lines that are doing the communication and it's analog and resistors if you just want the five volts and um, certain current uh, or power, power outputs. But otherwise, um, we're gonna dig in more into this actual communication digital part in the next video. So stay tuned and see you next time.